Hi, I'm Austin Francis. And I'm Elena Donatelli. And this is CTTV. Bringing you news from the trail. Keep watching to hear more about how CT celebrated our amazing veterans. How girls softball went. And more about spices? Many holidays are celebrated with NCT. Cherokee Trail recently celebrated Veterans Day. Here's a recap from the luncheon. The holiday season is upon us. With spooky season behind us, the sound of jingle bells is getting louder and louder. But in the midst of the holiday madness, Cherokee Trail took time to celebrate a smaller yet very important holiday, Veterans Day. The annual Veterans Day luncheon is held every year on November 11th, a time for the active and retired military members and their families to come together and celebrate all of their hard work and sacrifice. Throughout the luncheon, the sense of community and togetherness is undeniable. With the sharing of stories and words of wisdom and the display of gratitude for veterans, the luncheon begins to feel more like a family reunion. Next, student journalists Erica Ine, David Burnett, and Joey Devianovich talked to head coach Kaylee Mitchell and members of the girls softball team to recap their successful season and their favorite moments. Super fun season. I mean, like right off the bat, we had Jenna's injury, so it was overcoming that and then we had some other injuries throughout the season too that were tough um, but our team was really resilient that was the theme that we chose for our season and they bounced back we had great senior leadership and um, some younger kids really stepped up and it was just overall really fun it's a fun group of girls and we just had good times down there What's your favorite moment of the season uh, probably in regionals when we beat Rocky Mountain. It was fun. We ended up on a, like a funny play, like Riley bobbled the ball, but it was still fun. And I don't know, we finished strong and we proved that we can compete against anybody. I think the one that stands out the most to me is probably when we beat Smoky Hill. Um, it was like just really fun and everybody really participated and it was kind of a team win and um, I'll just never forget Sade Davis coming in to pitch that last inning and it was like so stressful for her and just came out victorious and it was just a really fun, really fun win. I think senior game was my favorite moment of the year. It was kind of sad though, but it was a really good game. Yeah, same here. Senior mode was pretty good. Um, we beat Arapa, which is like not really our rival for like school-wise, but for softball-wise. We were struggling against them, but then we beat them. And it's always good to see everyone come out and support for some of Lots of traditions. Um, man, I don't know if it's a superstition or not, but like a few years ago, we just created this dog pound theme. So the girls bark a lot during games, which I know is weird for really everyone outside of the team. Um, but that's kind of a thing. And then this year they added this flamingo theme to the season, which is super great. Uh, Traditions are like we do team taco night at our house every night or every year before playoffs. Um, we have all kinds of mottos and slogans that have become traditions in our program that we've kept through the years. Probably the biggest one that we refer to all the time is um, trust the process and then also that rosters change but expectations don't and that really became true for us. We, all, we had like a routine before every single game so um, each one of the players would do something and then as a team we would do down by the banks. And every time we didn't do it, we always lost, so... Yeah, it was like people would dance in a circle. It was always the same four people. Then we'd be down by the banks, and then Travis would baptize us with water. Um, we always did the church clap, clap before every game, and then we have pre-rituals like we do like in our circle before our lineups are announced. And if we didn't do those, we kind of thought we were going to lose or have a really bad game, so we made sure to be ready for every game. Then, reporters Vinny Chavez and Tanner Ruggerberg delve into the intricacies of the economic process in a post-pandemic era and looked into the lasting effects that COVID-19 has had on businesses, using savory spice as a representative for this topic. My name is Chris Cretino, and I'm the owner of Savory Spice in Southlands. Chris, like a majority of business owners, 
had to make some drastic changes to his business over the past 18 months. The pandemic has it shut us down January, February, March of, uh, of 2020. Um, we were limited with who we can, who, how many people are allowed in. We were limited, we were limited a lot. He now faces another stage of uncertainty with what business in a post-COVID era will be. Before, every single item had a taster and a, and a tester. So you can pour it in your hand, you can smell it, you can taste it, and then just wipe it on the floor. Those are all gone. Since then, though, we've now been opening up. We have to do quite a bit more cleaning. Uh, we clean probably four or five times a day now versus before the pandemic. Um, we wash, we wipe, we disinfect. Uh, we just took the, the screens down right now, the, the, the safety screens. Uh, if the government governor decides to put them back, have it put it back up, we'll put them back up. People now want to get out of their houses. They want to go walk around new shops and, and, and talk and learn and, and interact with, with people. I think that's what we're seeing more of right now. This is a shop that interacts with people, interacts with family. We create food, we create memories, we create all kinds of experiences. Uh, just with the tastes and the smells. So I think people now are starting to come out of their caves to just interact. People are getting a little cabin fever. With Chris being a connoisseur of spices and such, this was a rare opportunity to get a curated recommendation of spices. My favorite spice is the ghost pepper salt. So it's got ghost peppers, it's got salt, and a little bit of chocolate for the adhesive to keep the pepper attached to the salt. So you put this on your chicken, throw it on the grill, you got a sweet heat, that kicks you in the tail. They've been kind enough to provide us a little sample of the, uh, the ghost pepper salt, which is right there. Um, so we're gonna try some. Just put it on your tongue. <laughs> You're so red right now. <laughs> I don't need the milk personally. No, I see the sweat on your forehead. Yeah, you're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I see it too. You need to call 911 yet? No. You guys want us to get the Reaper out yet? I said we do it. I'll do it. <laughs> right on. I mean, there's a trash can right here if it really gets that bad. <laughs> okay. So the, the ghost pepper salt, that just wasn't enough. Um, so we have uh, uh, Carolina, Carolina Reaper. Carolina. Carolina Reaper on a stick. It's not that bad. No, there you go. Okay. Well, there you go. I thought that might have been a mistake. <laughs> Companies make those atomic wings or those crazy hot wings. That's what they use. Carolina Reapers. Why do you take your glasses off? Because they're falling. <laughs> 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 That wasn't that bad. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now, a spoonful of that. You want to try a spoonful of it? What if we did more? The toothpick wasn't enough, so we got a little spoonful here. Cheers. Oh my god. Got it. Finish it off. <laughs> you don't feel me? <laughs> no! That was surprisingly like not as well, bad as I thought it was. Well, it's not supposed to kill you, but it's hotter now. Yeah, it's hot. Well, thank you for everything. Also, head to our website at cthstoday.org to find out more about a local dance community and serious allegations of sexual misconduct against choreographer Travis Wall. This news has caused quite the stir with students and professionals in the community. Cougars, CTTV needs your help to collect submissions for this year's literary magazine. The Lit Mag is a collection of student-made art, photos, poems, and short stories that aim to show the creative side of our community. This year, the Lit Mag will be physically sewn into the yearbook, so anyone who buys a book will be able to see your amazing work. Submissions close early December, so make sure you submit your work soon. The submission forms can be found in your English or Art Classes Schoology page. If not, don't worry. You will also be able to find the form on posters around the school, so keep your eye out. If you have any questions, you can contact Lexi Cipriani or Austin Francis in room 271 during 4B, or by email, which will be linked in the description. Remember, submitting something is not a guarantee to be put in the lit mag, so only submit your best work. And now, a message from our student leadership team.
Hey Cougars, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving break. Student leadership is extra thankful for our amazing student body that brings the hype to the building, as well as comes together to make CT feel like the community that it is. CT, we have a super cool and easy opportunity to help support the Make-A-Wish Foundation before our Wish Week. Each year, Macy's donates $1 per letter to Santa that you write. Let's help support Macy's goal in raising $1 million for Make-A-Wish by writing letters to Santa. Here's how you can support. Go to Macy's.com. Once you get there, scroll down until you see the red box that says send letters, deliver wishes. Click on that box and it will take you to the page where you can write and send your letter. You can send in as many as you want and each one will help create life-changing wishes for kids across the country. Thanks UT, have a great rest of your week. Thanks leadership. Now let's hear more about what's happening around here at CT. Hello, I'm Sophia Martin and I'm one of the Colorado TSA State Officers at Large. The CT chapter of TSA is one of the leading chapters in the state and we want you to join. Some of the top reasons to get involved with TSA are that you get to work with fun and cool tools, participate in super cool hands-on events, catering toward the engineering, technology, and media arts fields, as well as attend a super cool state conference and even a nationals one in Dallas, Texas this year. Here's what is happening at CT this week. I encourage you to get out your phone so you can take a picture. Thank you to those of you who were green today for Kiva. Tonight is the Kiva concert. Come to the auditorium at 6.30 to see some of your classmates share their amazing talents while we celebrate the cultural diversity at CT. A minimum donation of 25 cents gets you in the door and all proceeds will go to support a micro loan for the family by your votes last week. Don't forget to wear your Olympic ring color tomorrow and join us at four o'clock in the lower lecture center for a French film. Friday is travel slash destination day. Wear something that represents a place that you have traveled or would like to travel to one day. In addition, Spanish Club will be selling pulse rays all week during lunches. Clubs meeting today after school are BSA and FCA. This Thursday, Latino Student Union will be meeting after school. All are welcome. Acapella Club will meet Rotary slash Red Cross meets. Then stop by the pool at 5 o'clock to cheer on our girls' swim and dive team as they take on Overland. Good luck to our girls' basketball team in the Thunder Ridge Tournament. Our boys' team will take on Range View Friday at 7 o'clock. Admission is free with your activities pass and remember to wear your mask. Good luck to our girls swim and dive team Saturday as they take on Legacy at VMAC. On Monday, stop by Geography Club, NaNoWriMo, or join me at the TSA meeting. On Tuesday, there will be a fashion club meeting after school. We will be celebrating the holidays and all are welcome for fun and games. Additionally, GSA will meet in 248, HOSA in room 176, and there will be an NHS meeting. Tuesday night is the final CPR certification class. Join us in the auditorium for incredible performances by our choirs. Admission is free and you must wear a mask. Good luck to our boys basketball team as they travel to Hinkley High School. The game is at 7. CT is starting a step team. If you're interested, come to our meeting next Wednesday. No experience is needed. Scan the QR code or join on Remind for information. Congratulations to our bands for their amazing big band boogie ball. The evening featured performances by all levels, dancing, and dessert. A great time was had by all who attended. Our TSA chapter has been busy. Members of the NASA Hunch Project got to meet with representatives from NASA as they are working together to create items that will travel to space. We sold items at the craft fair to raise money for our Go Baby Go project, which supports young children with mobility challenges. We are busy preparing for our state competition, which takes place in the end of February. The CT Speech and Debate team is looking for new recruits to join the team for the 2021 through 22 school year. If you enjoy writing, performing, or voicing your opinions, then Speech and Debate is the place for you. Visit room 224 or contact jwu at cherrycreekschools.org for more information. But now, let's meet some of the friendly faces of Speech and Debate.
Make sure you're staying up to date with our Instagram at CTHS News and the CT Today website for updates and newly posted stories. That's all for today, Cougars. And remember, we, we are CT. CT.